Hey, what's up everybody? Uh, so today I want to talk about um, ChatGPT and how it can be used in pharmacy. So ChatGPT is like a couple, it's been released to the world. It's a, not that old. Um, and it's incredibly fascinating and you can do all kinds of things with it. I when I, when I first heard about it, I just was like playing with it. I was asking it like explicit things and it would say, oh, that's inappropriate and blah, blah, blah. I was asking it how I could make money to do poetry. It, it's a really a, a really interesting tool. Um, and I think it has a lot of impact in several industries. And mostly I've talked about pharmacy. So I kind of want to just focus this video on how chat GPT can be used um, in pharmacy. But I think the implications are huge. I saw in the Wall Street Journal that uh, the founders of Google are back because they're concerned about how ChatGPT could displace Google. And I think it definitely has that potential to be integrated with a Google search engine, say a rival like Bing. I did see where Microsoft was talking about, Microsoft had invested money in OpenAI and could use ChatGPT in, in Bing. I mean, that that's crazy. If you have, if you just play with it a little bit, you can see the potential for that if you had the the intelligence plus the um, searching capacity that Google has um, you can see how crazy the how useful it could be when I was a, a pharmacy student sometimes I would have um, professors just tell me to Google things like they would say oh just Google it like why are you asking me just Google it and I could see a kind of a parallel there where you could be like well just use the AI and see what they say so uh, one thing I want to look at is like how can pharmacy be used in pharmacy? So I was messing around with ChatGPT and I just wanted to kind of share it with you all um, some of the responses I get. So uh, I asked it, so how can ChatGPT be used in pharmacy? So it says um, medication information, medication reminders, prescription refills, drug interactions, clinical decision support, and virtual assistance. So I could see a world where like um, you're on your pharmacy's website and you're like, you know, what what medications do I have coming up? Um, what look like they're due for refills? Can you refill them for me? Um, basically almost taking out that ho the whole phone call with the pharmacy. I could also see if the um, if the chat GPT is integrated with a medication database, it could ask interaction questions. And if it's been trained properly, it could probably even like answer the questions. For instance, like, can I take uh, Warfarin with um, vitamin K? And then you can say, oh no, you can't do it. Or here's the, here's the consequences of that. Or even um, this isn't appropriate for chat GPT. Let me have you talk to someone from the pharmacy. Um, but there are a lot of interesting things. Um, so I asked, it says medication information, medication reminders, kind of like, like right now, a pharmacy will text you like, hey, your, your amlodipine is ready to be refilled. Um, I could see how ChatGPT could be like, would you like to refill it? It's like, no, I want to refill my lisinopril. I'm not taking amlodipine. It's like, okay, we'll remove amlodipine from your profile. It's just a, another level of intelligence. It could really disrupt things. Uh, so I asked it, how can ChatGPT be used to make more money per prescription? So it says, upselling, ChatGPT can be trained on product information and used to make personalized recommendations to patients, potentially increasing the number of products they purchase per prescription. So right there, there's a there's an ethical com component. It's like, oh, you're on hydrocodone. Would you like to try morf morphine ER 30 milligrams? Like there's uh, some, some ethical issues there. Uh, it says cross-selling, ChatGPT can be used to identify opportunities for cross-selling products and services such as offering vitamins or supplements to patients with certain medication conditions. Oh, you're on Merbitric, which is a uh, something for uh, incontinence. It's like, oh, do you want adult diapers as well? Like personalized marketing, cost optimization. Chat BT, GPT can be used to optimize the cost of prescriptions by identifying the most effective options for patients based on their medical history and insurance coverage. So that's kind of similar to what pharmacists do sometimes when, um, I'll just use the Merbitric Mer example because it was really expensive, but they'll say, oh, actually, um, there's another medication called Ditropane, which is similar and it's like $5. You could use that if this isn't effective. Maybe it's a little bit better, but 
you know, I, I can see how you could use chat GPT, train it in, in a lot of these scenarios. And because the thing with the chat GPT, it also learns like you can teach it. So like if you have a chat session open, I saw another uh, YouTuber ask a question like, what is two plus two? And you can train it to believe that two plus two is five, basically. So you can do that. You could probably train it on a lot of these scenarios and actually have correct responses, like kind of the responses that you want um, for the patient. It says prescription adherence. By using ChatGPT, pharmacies can create personalized reminders for patients to take their medication on time. Adhering to medication regimen can lead to fewer hospital visits and better outcomes. So yeah, I, th I, I could see that. So I asked this question, where should a pharmacy be located for t to make the most money? Um, and it's kind of crazy, these responses, the demographics, look for population density and age, competition, the number of other pharmacies in the area, accessibility, a location that's easily accessible, visibility, locating in an affluent area, and uh, prescription vo volume. So if you're located near a hospital, clinics, or senior living, all of these are very valid. And it's just crazy how, um, how it comes up with these. How can pharmacy use social media to make more money? Marketing, engagement, special offers, virtual consultations, reviews and feedback, community building. How can ChatGPT be used to make customers less annoying? ChatGPT can be used in several ways to potentially improve customer interactions and make them less annoying. Automated customer service, personalized assistance, medication information reminders, so that's kind of similar. You know, some other things I asked it are, uh, do you have feelings as an AI? I do not have feelings in the way that humans do. I am a machine that processes and generates text. Based on the input that I receive, I can respond in a way that may seem like I have feelings, but this is simply a result of my programming and the way that I have been trained on large amounts of text data. It's a little creepy because I can also respond in a way that makes it seem like I have feelings. Okay, so I was uh, negotiating for a car and I asked it, how do I ask the salesman politely for more time? You can say something like, I appreciate your time and the information you've provided, but I need more time to think about it. May I have a little longer to consider before making a decision? Or can I have a little longer to think about it and get back to you at a later time? I think that's a good response. So I played a lot, I played around a lot with like video titles and generating video titles. Like I said, come up with some video ideas in the style of Mr. Beast and Dr. Mike com combined. Um, the ultimate charity challenge. Mr. Beast and Dr. Mike team up to raise money for a charitable cause. Surviving the wilderness. Mr. Beast and Dr. Mike are dropped off in the middle of a wilderness. The ultimate science experience. Experiment. Mr. Beast and Dr. Mike conduct a series of experiments to test the limits of science and see what is possible. I said, come up with a compelling video title from a pharmacist. Unlocking the mystery of medications, a pharmacist perspective. Again, I said again. Description, prescription for confusion. Navigating the complex world of medications with a pharmacist. And I said, make it shorter. So I said, try it again with a redneck theme. Redneck Remedies, a country pharmacist guide to medications. Moonshine to Meds, a redneck pharmacist perspective. Down Home Meds, a, re a redneck pharmacist guide to medication safety. Rugged RX, navigating medications with a redneck pharmacist. Trailer Park, Med I think that's offensive. So this will uh, potentially offend you, this thing. Redneck pharmacist guide to medication optimization. Bubba's medication myths. Busting common, common misconceptions with a redneck pharmacist. Roughneck meds, a redneck pharmacist guide to medication interaction. I think a roughneck is more of someone who works on a, an oil rig. Off-road medications, a redneck pharmacist perspective. So there's some, the AI is connecting roughneck and off-road with redneck. Redneck medication matters, insights from a country pharmacist. Rural remedies, a redneck pharmacist guide to medications. And sometimes I'm trying, like when I do it, I'll try to train it to get rid of the disclaimer because the, the AI thing uses a lot of time telling you disclaiming and it's kind of annoying. Like I said, pharmacist video title inspired by Mr. Beast. Pharmacist versus Mr. Beast, the ultimate medication challenge. 
So I said, 10 pharmacist videos in Mr. B style, not necessarily about medicine. Pharmacist ultimate challenge. Can I pass the pharmacy board exam in 24 hours? Pharmacist big giveaway, giving away a year's worth of medicine to a lucky winner. Pharmacist hidden talent, showcasing my skills outside of dispensing medication. Pharmacist epic road trip, traveling across the country to visit independent farms. That, that'd be fun, that's a good idea. Pharmacist 24 hour shift, documenting a day in the life of a pharmacist on the job. Another thing you can do with ChatGPT is you can take a large amount of text and they'll summarize it for you, so you don't have to read. Uh, it can make blog posts for you. It's a, it's a wild technology. Um, I think it has the potential to really change pharmacy and of course, especially technology, because I was talking to a, a friend of mine who does uh, coding for lawyers and he put in the, his homework and it came out with the response for the coding homework. And he said it was better than the answer key. I think there's a lot of ways this can be used. Um, I don't think people fully understand it yet. Um, I know that big companies like Google are concerned about it. Okay, that's it everybody. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. Um, thanks a lot. Bye.